One of the interesting reactions to earnings over the past week or so was Robinhood. Shares are down about 13.5% in the past week as of the end of closing on Monday. And that was because the company's earnings report was a little bit disappointing for investors. Now, Robinhood is one of these companies that's done extremely well over the past couple of years. Year to date, shares are up 96.6% over the past year. Shares are up 154%. So expectations are getting higher and higher as the stock price goes higher. So that can make the reaction in the market pretty volatile. But I wanna take a step back and look at the trends that we should be watching with Robinhood. This is a company that I've called a bit of a Trojan horse in the brokerage business. It's coming at the market a little bit differently, going after people who are doing mobile trading. Now it's moving into more traditional markets like desktop trading, active traders, trying to get into IRAs. These are all businesses that traditional brokerages and big banks have had their hands in for a very long time. And now Robinhood started in these other markets with smaller traders and is now moving into the game with the big boys. The other thing Robinhood is doing is moving into more traditional financial services, things like credit cards, but it's not doing that the same way as everybody else. It's using what I look at as a kind of a Costco model. So an annual fee or a monthly fee with a Robinhood gold membership gets you a whole bunch of benefits on their own. Each of those benefits is going to lose Robinhood money, but overall, as long as Robinhood can operate the business at a break-even level, just like Costco operates each of its stores basically at a break-even level, that monthly or annual fee to be a member of Robinhood Gold can be where the profit growth lies for the company. So with that context in mind, I'm gonna look at results and show where I think there's a lot of progress and what investors were focused on that was maybe a little bit disappointing. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. First of all, let's look at the market's reaction. And I just wanted to show this to put some context to the move. This is over the past week. You can see this was the start of trading on Wednesday. That was when results came out. Not a very positive reaction from the market. But pull back a little bit. Pull back six months. Stocks up is 37%. Last year, it's up 154%, like I mentioned earlier. Things have been pretty volatile over the course of its history as a public company, though. But I'll get to why this inflection point has happened over the past year. As we look at the third quarter results, this is really the first page that I think you should look at as an investor. Funded customers is just going to be the number of customers. So you want this number to be going up over time. It is, but the growth in the past quarter has not been what it was a little bit earlier this year. Some of the bonuses that they had in the spring did not repeat in third quarter. Some of those have come back a little bit more recently, but that's one of the re reasons that the market wasn't necessarily super excited about these results. Assets under custody does continue to go up, but that's likely because of the increase in the stock market. So you're going to have more assets under custody as asset values go up. Net deposits, again, here's those benefits that I talked about earlier this year. Those drew in a lot of customers in the first and second quarter. That growth did not repeat itself quite to the same level in the third quarter, but still an annualized growth rate of 29%. That is really good from a net deposits perspective. But this is the one that I wanna focus on and I think investors should be paying more attention to. That is the number of gold subscribers, 2.19 million gold subscribers as of the end of the third quarter. These are people that are paying right around $50 a year for gold subscriptions. 9% of customers now pay for that gold subscription. That is up from 5.7% a year ago. So if this number can get to 40, 50, 60% of customers on Robinhood, and I think it should, I am a gold subscriber. I have one of these gold credit cards now. 3% cash back for gold cards is absolutely crazy, and it's a no-brainer for customers. I'll just go down here to that details page. This on the left here is the benefit that gold subscribers get. 4.5% interest on un uninvested cash, 3% match on IRAs. So I have a Roth IRA, you get a 3% match on every deposit every month. Trading, you get lower commissions. First $1,000 of margin is free. Advanced data and research. Here's that gold card, 3% cash back. That is more than an actual transaction cost. So Robinhood is actually losing money on every single one of those transactions. But they're saying that, hey, we're going to make it up by having more people using margin, by having more people having a account balance on their gold card. And a lot of these benefits, like the IRA match, like the unlimited deposit boost, they, they require you to have assets on the platform for a certain period of time. So it's not like you're just gonna deposit one day, pull your money out the next day. This is They're trying to build a long-term relationship with these benefits. 
So that's why you want to see this number, the number of gold subscribers and this adoption rate continue to go up. And they said that their gold subscribers have seven times more assets under custody, deposit at twice the rate of most of other users and have a 5X increase in retirement adoption. That's the other thing that I think is really overlooked with Robinhood right now. Look at this right here. Retirement assets under custody. End of the third quarter, 2023, $1.1 billion. A year later, $9.9 billion. These are customers like myself who are probably gonna have a multi-decade relationship with Robinhood. And there are a ton of ways that brokerages can make money on these accounts. Fees from short sales, like I talked about margin, maybe not something you do in a retirement account. Trading fees, all of this growth in assets under custody is gonna be good news for the company. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The other thing, look at this trend here. This is one thing that I was watching when I first started looking at Robinhood. The retirement assets under custody per account, just $2,800. So these are pretty low numbers. These are users who are early in their investing journey. That's now up to $10,500. So Robinhood is attracting a more affluent consumer today than they were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago when there was like YOLO trading going on. So all these things are good things for the long-term durability of Robinhood's business. So I've given the positive spin for this quarterly report, but what's the negative spin? Well, revenue was down from a quarter ago. Remember Robinhood makes a lot of its money on transactions. So when tra transactions aren't quite as active, then you're gonna have less revenue. Adjusted EBITDA fell in the quarter, net income, fell in the quarter, the company was still profitable, but made less net income than it did in the second quarter of 2024. So if you're just looking at quarter to quarter numbers, they can seem a little bit disappointing for the third quarter of 2024. But that's why I say you need to pull back, look at the long-term strategy that Robinhood is trying to implement. Are they on a path to execute that strategy? I think they absolutely are. One of the things that Vlad, the CEO and founder has talked about is the cohort of users that they're attracting to Robinhood are the people who are gonna be inheriting billions and billions of dollars over the next 10 to 20 years. This is the people, like I said, are early in their investment journey. So Robinhood is gonna ride that wave of growth for the next 10 or 20 years. This is why the user growth and the huge growth in the number of gold subscribers is so important for Robinhood. I think the product roadmap is also positive. We'll see how they do with some of these things. Winning in the active trader market, they introduced the Robinhood Legend product. So they're gonna look for increased equity market share, options market share, crypto market share, all things that you wanna see long-term from a trading perspective, increased wallet share. This is what I'm more worried about long-term is can they attract more gold customers and retirement customers, credit cards, this is gonna be a more recurring revenue source, and then add other account types. There's a number of different ways that Robinhood can move from an account type and they've just started opening those things up and then expanding internationally. This is another area of huge growth potential for Robinhood. And this is where being a technology platform is gonna be an advantage. They can just move their technology from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, allow them to leverage what they've built globally. The other thing I wanted to point out is I think Robinhood is growing in the right places. Equity, notional volume, and options contracts traded continues to go up. That's the more traditional trading. What happened in the first and second quarter? There was a ton of crypto trading going on. That's something that didn't quite repeat in the third quarter. So it looks like a lot of that trading is moving to other platforms. And that's a big reason that this transaction revenue was down a little bit in the quarter. But overall, when you look at these results, I think Robinhood is headed in the right direction. They're attracting more of the right kind of customer than they were a few years ago. They're becoming a much more stable and kind of adult platform rather than just having YOLO trading going on. I think that was a really tough position for them to be in. But I love having more retirement accounts, getting into more credit cards, deepening that relationship with customers, making it a positive experience. Honestly, the gold card has been one of the most positive and impressive experiences that I've had from activating a new credit card. And given those benefits, absolutely something that I'm using as my primary card. So I think Robinhood is heading in the right direction. Obviously the market's reaction wasn't positive, but I think that's because investors were just looking at those short-term numbers but pull back a little bit. That's why I'm looking at this at time, as a time to accumulate shares, keep building my position in Robinhood because this is a company that I think is gonna be a much better position five, 10, 15 years from now. They have a better cost structure. They have better technology. 
I think they're just in a much better position than most of the rivals in the brokerage business who are still kind of legacy trading companies, even if they've moved into a more digital world. Robinhood is digital first, and that's going to be a huge advantage for them. But let me know what you think about the quarter from Robinhood. Are you buying shares or have you cooled off a little bit? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.